Hello everyone. <laughs> this is Simon and Tom from the Offner team. We are here to answer your questions today and to talk about our new uh, event that we currently have in the game. And maybe we can start with maybe you can start with telling us what the event is about, Simon. Yeah, it's called uh, Rise of the Phoenix. Oh, hello everyone, by the way. And um, Rise of the Phoenix is like our interpretation of Easter in Elvenar. So eggs have fallen from the sky and you can collect uh, sky essences and you can open up eggs, mysterious things uh, where precious rewards are inside. And um, it's a bit like previous events we had, but the rewards are way different uh, this time. As at least as, uh, the, the, some of them, we have new kinds of buildings in the game and we have new kinds of productions in the game and um, we are looking forward to your feedback about it and maybe you have questions yeah so um, actually we also collected some questions as always uh, from the forums that occurred so uh, as long as we are still waiting for some people to pop up we can al already answer some of the questions we found there so Tom, maybe you start with one question? Yes, one of the questions that we heard a lot is that the rewards that we currently have are slightly uh, different than rewards that we've seen before. For example, on the first day you could get the Tower of Fire and that building required a street connection. Why is that? Yeah, so, surprise, surprise, uh, some event buildings, some buildings you can win in the event uh, suddenly require a street connection. So, they, the rule is simple, if they produce something they require a street connection. If they don't produce something, if they just um, give some culture or population, then they will not require a street connection. That sounds easy to remember. <laughs> yeah. So, and this is just one example, the Tower of Fire it produces coins. No? We have also buildings like the Travel Merchants that produce goods. That's also new for us, that building that gives both um, actually access to, to two goods at once. Um, and they are always the goods where you have no production boost for, so they can really help you to close the gap between those goods. Um, very interesting to see how you like those buildings. They are a bit small, so um, they are small enough to fit into every city with ease. And of course, from the size, they also do not produce a hell of uh, good amounts. But um, it's still, it's still nice additions, and if you collect all three of them, that's really a nice chunk what you get there. Yes, and I think you have multiple uh, days where you can get them, so watch out for those, look out for them, and collect them all. Yeah. <laughs> and there's also some uh, eggs in the border of the cities. Uh, are there, and, and can you get some extra sky essence from those, or how does that work? Yeah, so uh, it's a bit like the, in the winter event where you have those had those snowflakes uh, appearing in your city. So randomly, sometimes uh, those eggs fall from the sky, and you click on them, and you get additional sky essence. And this can be used for um, for opening the the eggs with the precious rewards inside. So if you play regularly, you can uh, um, collect more of them. If you only play once a day, that's not a big plus on your. <laughs> So log in often enough and collect as many of the of the eggs as you can. So yeah, because you get as much sky essence to open and, and crack more eggs for more buildings, more other rewards, etc. So they drop fairly often, no? Every few yes. minutes. There's a bit of a randomizer in it, so we cannot tell you precisely when an egg will crush on your city. Um, but you can only have up to five or six eggs at the same time. So if you don't open them there no no additional eggs will pop. Yes. Ah yeah, uh, since we are still uh, taking the questions from the forums, please yes. uh, also um, use the opportunity and ask us directly, spontaneously, yes. what you want to know about the events or if it's about another Elvenar topic, you can of course also ask this. Definitely. We yeah. already have some first comments and uh, Rick said that he really loves the graphics of the new spring event and we're happy that you like them and yeah. I, I hope that you collect all the buildings. Yeah, so a few people are dropping in now. Yes, <laughs> so let the questions go. <laughs> we are ready to answer. That's why we're here after all. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, 
So actually, we also covered now a few questions from the forums, like how many eggs can be in your city? So the answer is, is it's five or six, um, not more than six. And how often do they fall? Yeah, uh, several times an hour, but yes. I can't tell you. It's random. If it's five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, we, we made it a bit more unpredictable. So it also feels a bit more like, you know, like it's real. <laughs> yeah. It is real, Timon. Right? I, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, once you have those buildings, they are really in your city, ne? and they exactly. produce real stuff, awesome exactly. stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Talking about awesome, have you seen the main prices this time? It's, oh, it's gorgeous yes. how yes, these buildings look. Yeah. I mean, me as the balancer, I always also like them for what they're <laughs> adding to your economy, right? Yes, Giving this huge people. amount of culture and population. But the I visuals like, alone. I, I like looking at them more than looking at the numbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe that's just more natural. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So, that's okay. Question. Carolyn asks why we can't have storage. I'm not entirely sure what storage you're talking about, so maybe you could uh, uh, elaborate on uh, that a bit more. Maybe she's talking but about the storage for buildings. Probably, but if because you get it's one of the favorite questions our uh, users have. I haven't been in enough, in enough live streams, I think. <laughs> yeah. So we, we get the, the storage question uh, every time we do the Probably. Facebook Live. It's, it's, it's funny. Um, <laughs> so maybe the person also knows the answer, if, ah. <laughs> if he or she has watched us ah. before. Um, yeah, so we don't offer a storage in, in Elvena to store buildings. Uh, that is true. Yeah, that's true. We so do. for us, puzzling is part of the challenge. Mm -hmm. And we also gave some other help to, to puzzle. At the beginning of the game, you get um, new map expansions quite frequently. Yeah, You never have to wait long until you can expand your city again. And a new expansion is actually like a storage, right? So if you want to reshuffle your town, ben do so before you fill every space up exactly. uh, with yes. new buildings. Exactly. And later in the game we have the guest races. And every time when a guest race leaves town, half of your city is empty. And then you also have plenty of space to reshuffle. So we actually don't see uh, how uh, storage would help in, in most cases. And of course it would be even a bit more flexible. On the other side, then it would also become a bit too easy. No? Probably yes. In, yeah, probably. I mean, in this game, it's about planning and strategic decisions, right? So you have to to think before you do things, and you have to plan ahead and say, okay, if I build every single space, uh, I build buildings on it, then I can also not uh, place the buildings I win in events, for instance, which would be a shame, wouldn't it? So better you leave some space, so you can shuffle around and you can place new buildings you win and stuff that will help. Vicky also asks if it is more difficult to get the third grand prize compared to the Snow Flurry event. So that was the event that we had in, in December and January. Yeah. And I don't think it is much more difficult or difficult yeah. more difficult at all, right? Or I mean, it's not <coughs> easy to quantify exactly. No? I mean, we can give you the play numbers, but there's so much more uh, what depends on it. How often do you play? How <coughs> many of those eggs that fall from the sky do you collect? because they can have yes. a great deal on their way. No? But in general, we, we looked at the results of the last uh, event and we said it's, uh, it's, it's okay as it is, and we did not change a lot of things now uh, from, from this question, uh, how, how it is to get the last present. So short answer should be... It should, should, be should feel fairly similar. Should yeah. feel similar. Definitely. I think that is a very clear answer. <laughs> Kein Deutsch. More, more we can't talk German. German here, no. <laughs> no, no German today, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Very unfortunately for you. Uh, yes. Uh, we're getting more and more questions. We're just slowly reading through them. Yeah, just when, pick when, one. When is the ancient wonder rebalancing going to, to occur? Ah, that's a wonderful question. Yes. Because. <laughs> <laughs> um, in just a few weeks. So we are done with the first Ancient Wonders and the first effects. We are just in the testing phase and we'll release it to our beta version of the game very soon, even this week. I can say so much. Um, but <clears throat> we don't... Um, so we wait for the deploy to the international markets uh, to have all the buildings ready. 
so it does not become unfair for those who have these engine owners that are already in the new system and the, and, uh, the other ones that still are in the old system. We don't want to have this situation, so we, um, we are now changing the buildings one by one in a very fast uh, fashion actually. So uh, adjusting to the new engine owner concept for the first effect well, took a very long time actually, and it was, <laughs> it was a complex uh, matter. To handle, but we did so, and now everything goes really fast. We can we, we manage one or two engine runners a day, so it's only a matter of days until we are um, done with the engine runners, and then we can release it. Uh, so only a few more days, maybe weeks. Sounds good. Yeah. Oh, I already see the first unicorns appear in the chat. Yeah, unicorns. That, that, also, that the first unicorns company. will appear soon in the ESA yes. event. Or they, they have. Online, not yet. Online, not yet. No. But maybe there, yeah. there will be unicorns. This event might have, have unicorns. Rise of course. The Rise of the Phoenix. What is unicorn. an event without unicorns? I mean, yeah. Tell us. What is what an, is event, an without event without <laughs> unicorns? <laughs> yeah. We would like to see your comments. Ah, more questions. Ah. ah, there was one question about the culture value of the neighbors, no? So can uh, John G. Lin asks, ah, can yeah. you give us a way to know the culture value of neighbors' buildings? Interesting question. We also thought about it. Um, in general, of course, it would be welcomed if you know when you're visiting someone on which building he would profit the most. No? For you, it doesn't matter too much. You get the same reward on every building, but you want to really help him. No? So. Um, we are actually thinking about different ways how to simplify it. I mean, this one would be like the, 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 the easy route, just say, uh, show it in a tooltip, and then uh, you can see how much culture this building has. But this is still not maybe the perfect solution, because if you display it uh, on the building uh, how much culture it has, you still have to go through every culture building before you know, ah, this was the one with the highest number. So maybe that's still not the perfect solution. So we are thinking about different ways how to do it. And maybe it will be something even better. But there's nothing I can announce today. This is becoming my most favorite uh, sentence. <laughs> we, I cannot there's say nothing, anything today. No, there's no. nothing we can no. announce today. I'm no. sorry. But we are thinking about this topic. And yeah, it's a problem currently. I agree. McFanks asks why, uh, if we can have the option to downgrade buildings, and I guess I can oh. give a very short answer on that. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, not. Because but it's just why unfortunately? Not. Tom, explain. It is just not possible with the current system that we have. But why would you want to downgrade a building? Yeah, that's a better question. What? To make it smaller again? I don't know. Upgrading is awesome. Yes. Yeah, that's why upgrade we decided to game around upgrades, right? Make I mean, make it bigger. Yeah, yes. you really should like upgrading the buildings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why don't? Uh, maybe. Why don't maybe you want? want to? It's it's maybe because he wants to have some resources back that he invested for the upgrade. Maybe. I mean, if you want resources back, you have to sell the building, and then yeah, you get a lot of resources. But that is true. All the building is gone. I don't know. That I mean, you true. always can cancel an upgrade until it's done, before it's done. But yeah. Is there any way to get Ambrosia other than diamonds? What? No, of course. Ambrosia? Yes, that's one of the fairy goods. Ah, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, you have to have the required goods for Ambrosia and then you can produce it. In the you don't need diamonds for that. Yes. If you want to have it quick, um, quick and fast, uh, not the other yeah. one. <laughs> then, then you can, then of course. You, you can, can, of course, use diamonds. Yes. But actually, um, you have to produce uh, the other resources of the farms and then you can do it. I mean, the resources for Ambrosia cannot be produced in the... In the that's a day farm resource and, and, so and you have to have the night farms to produce the stuff you need for Ambrosia. Yes. So unlock the night farms, place it, produce it. Yes, and within the day farm you can always see which goods you need to start a production of, in this case, Ambrosia. Yeah. So, so we don't have any resources in the game that you can only acquire using diamonds. Nope. That is absolutely true. Ah, that would not be fair, would it? No. 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 We don't want that. <laughs> yeah. Ah. 
many more questions. I find, I find a reason why you would want to downgrade a building. Because yeah. if everything is at level 15, uh, Adam says, and you need to upgrade to level 10, a downgrade would be awesome. So ah. You can then still upgrade to level 16. And it's it true. Still there are quests to say upgrade to at least level yes. 10 or 11 or something. But you can still do an, uh, an upgrade to level 16 then. But maybe he has a quest. Uh, he has a quest to upgrade something, and everything in his in his city is currently maxed out. Ah, oh, that's good one. But even then, I have a trick for you. you as I said earlier, no, it's always nice to have some space left in your city then you can build a new building on level 1. If you just need something to upgrade, yes. build a level 1 building and upgrade it. It goes very fast. That should work. But I still think there was something that people want to do. But it's, it's uh, funny. I don't know. <laughs> I don't I'm know. just reading all the comments at the same time. Uh, yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult to answer your questions and read them at the same time. Yeah, that, that is hard. Sometimes we struggle a bit with that. Yes. Will you be releasing other event structures? Erika A. Wagner. Hello, Erika. She asks... Will you be ah, releasing Father other tree event again. structures? Because she saw that the Father Tree is uh, available again, or was available again in the... A winter event, I guess. Yeah. And will we be re-releasing more buildings? Shortly? I mean, yeah, we look at all the buildings. Uh, we look at how you like them. We are collecting your feedback on that. And uh, the buildings that people like the most are reoccurring. No? Because not everyone has it yet, or some want to have it twice. And if you proceed through the tech tree and enter a new chapter, you can get an upgraded version of the building. Yes. So. If you have favorite buildings and they are not too closely tied to a specific thing, like the snowman in the summer event is event yeah, is maybe that not that likely. That be but uh, besides that, yeah, we definitely look into yes. how we reuse the stuff. As I said before, what is an event without unicorns? Yes, yes. Uh, but maybe her question was also about the event structure. So uh, we also try to have little variations in the in the structure, how events are. I mean, we on, already have two very different kind of events, where the one is with the big boxes you open, and uh, like the, the current event, but we also have the smaller quest lines, where you, like the wonky water or Halloween event, yes. um, where you uh, have, uh, yeah, just a quest line, um, and you have they are shorter, they are more limited, but they are also more focused, and you know exactly what you get at the end. So, but yeah, uh, nothing to uh, keep us thinking about another way how to make events, of course. So we will not repeat this pattern over and over and over again. No, no we want to give something new every time. Yeah. So for this time, we went with some new buildings. Exactly. Uh, no? like so this the time, the big emergence. news is of, uh, that you have yes. uh, very different buildings now. So yes. even the building and that... And of course, the unique buildings for the Easter event, like the, the, the grand prizes. So yeah. you have the, the big flaming phoenix and two more buildings. Yeah. Uh, you can see which one in awesome. game. I don't have to tell you that. You all know <laughs> that already anyways. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean now with buildings that produce rare resources, like uh, even the, this battle yes. unit, no? Ox strategist, uh, yes. for some players who are in the first one, two, three chapters, that's really, really nice to have a unit available that is, comes in the eighth chapter of the game. That sounds mm -hmm. quite strong. Yeah, yeah, I would like to have that too. That is nice. Keep an eye open for this one. It will occur only one day, and you have to play on that day, and have to open the chest on that day, and you have to win and, it. And win it that day. Then you have this new troop unlocked suddenly. It's nice. Awesome. Nice. That will also help for those people who say that they can't win battles. Because I've seen a couple of comments. And then you can use these uh, units to win some more battles. And someone said that they want a flaming horse. That was crystal. They want a flaming horse. Would that be a flaming unicorn or just a flaming horse? Just ask. I I'm see. We are curious. We are getting to the more important question. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe we should actually have a stable, and you can place the and you can place the unicorns in the stable. In the stable. In the stable. You mean you can store the buildings in the building? Oh. 
Please don't open this oh, okay. gate. No, I'm not gonna open that box. That no. May maybe no staple then. Will there be a sixth world? Uh, if there is a need for that, then we will open more worlds, yes. But so far we have uh, enough so space in the worlds that we have. So Debbie is referring to the game worlds per, yes. uh, no, per yes. country. So yes. per country we have different game worlds where you start your account and you play together no. with other players only within the same world. And if this world becomes too crowded, we open up a new world. And Excellent. obviously in her country we already opened five worlds, yes. which is nice. Ah. More unicorns, unicorns, Pegasus. <laughs> <laughs> you actually I just want to talk about unicorns and horses. Maybe she I do. can't Let's believe that this. I can't believe this. You can. Unicorns are a nice topic. They are a nice topic. See? Once. What Maybe mean, twice. What do you mean once or twice? I mean, I mean. You can film many live streams with you. We should sell them as, as you know, as, as teddy bears, as, as puppets, or I would say as oh, um, no. pets. She's yeah. A pet. <laughs> like a life unicorn. That yeah. would be awesome. Want to have 2,000 diamonds or a unicorn? Unicorn. A unicorn, obviously. <laughs> People. I mean, we listen to your feedback, and if you continue to pee, <laughs> That crazy for unicorns, that's all what you will get. <laughs> I promise you. The next, next, the next guest race will just be the unicorns <laughs> and you will build stables and acres and fields and they, they, everything will be full of horses and then you will be happy, right? Yes, this, this, because then we will have many unicorns. This, this dragon-like creature crawling out of the egg in the phoenix event, no? the phoenix. Mm. This is an awesome animal. Me also. Yes. Also. <laughs> or oh, have you seen the dragons from the sorcerer's chapter? Oh, awesome. Nice. But unicorns. Yeah. Anna understands this. She says there's no such thing like too many unicorns. That is absolutely true. <laughs> but also no such thing as too many dragons. That's what you said. Yes. We can have both. You can have the unicorns from the event, and if you play through the sorcerers and dragons, then you get dragons. People, do you really want to discuss with us about unicorns all the time? No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Why, why, don't you, why don't you ask us questions where we become shy and maybe don't want to answer? Okay, no, I'm pushing it now. <laughs> if you have more questions, then please feel free to ask them. We're, we are reading all the comments. But so far we see a lot of unicorns in the chat. Yeah, and also that's, we see a question about storage again. But I will answer the storage question only once <laughs> per Facebook Live session. So <laughs> next Facebook Live session I will answer again if and why and if not we will have a storage for buildings. Um, yeah, and if you want yeah. to answer from this time then you should watch the live stream from the start if you haven't seen it already. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Actually, uh, we are really happy that you, uh, you ask us the question and continue to do so. And maybe if you are asking us often enough about storage, we might at one point in time, which is not today or tomorrow or next week or next month. Yeah, we, will, we might have a different answer. But for now, the answer is we, will, we do not plan to have a storage for buildings. And we see <coughs> currently other solutions for the problem of needing space to reshuffle the city. Yeah, what is the question? The question from Christian, Christian Thoma. Yes. So there's a lot of missions in this event, but a lot of them are, are uh, taking one or two days. Is it possible ah. to make them all in 30 days? Yeah, fair question. Like, is sure. it even manageable to finish all the quests in time, let's say, without using premium? Mm -hmm. And the answer definitely is yes. I mean, yeah, you have to be a very engaged player mm -hmm. uh, for some quests, no? But uh, in general, yeah, it's balanced that you can finish all the quests of the yes. quest line. Especially the daily quests are definitely possible. And yeah. for the because we have two quest lines. One is a daily quest line where you can unlock one quest each day, and you have a quest line that has basically a lot of quests so that you can always do something in the event. And for those, you obviously need to play actively and, uh, uh, yeah, often. 
And the yes. more you play, the easier it gets to finish them all. I guess that makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Is there and yeah, for some oh. people, some people are saying that some of the quests take take too long for them. Um, yes, some quests do take long, but we also have quests that, uh, for for example, uh, let's take an example. We have a quest that asks you to scout a province. For some people, that can take a lot of time. That is absolutely true. But we also have quests that um, ask you to uh, gain goods or gain uh, coins or supplies. And uh, for the people who are very advanced, those quests will be very easy, therefore very quick. So all in all, it balances out. Because for new players, these quests will be harder to complete no. and will take more time. While their scouting quests take less time. So all in all, you should be spending approximately the same time on all the quests. I mean, we have two dimensions. Now, of course, we have quests that naturally take a bit more time and quests that are faster to complete. But then we also have what, what Tom just pointed out. We have quests that are fast to solve for advanced players, but slow for young players. And on the other side, quests that are the other way around. And uh, we try to balance this out, and um, it should work for all of you. That is at least what we aim for, yes. Yeah, I mean, if you can pick a specific que a quest where you say, here, I really have problems and it's it's unfair or whatever, then tell us and we can still lo look into it. But for now, that's our goal. Yes. Larry is asking, how do you get the orcs needed for taking provinces? At some point, you will need uh, orcs to, to uh, negotiate in the provinces, that is true. And once you reach the Orcs and Goblins chapter, uh, you will be able to upgrade your armories to level 20, I think you need. Yeah. And um, <coughs> in the armories level 20 and higher, you will be able to produce Orcs. Mm -hmm. And those Orcs you can use on the world map to negotiate in, in the provinces. Yeah. So early, quite early in the Orc chapter, you have this technology for the armories. Yes. And then the armories breeding grounds, as we call it then. Yes. And from that on, you can actually produce stuff in the in the armory. Yeah. Wendy asks if you can build on the water. Short answer: No, you cannot. But maybe maybe to come back to this org point. Uh -huh. Usually, before you face those costs in negotiation, you should mm -hmm. already have access to orcs. But we had a bug in the game. No, dare you say it? But yeah. So there was actually a, a small typo that we had to fix um, that led to the issue that some people were asked for orcs in, uh, on, on the world map in negotiations a bit too, too early yes. um, in the tournaments. Exactly, that was just in the tournaments. So, yeah, so it was just in the tournament. Normal properties, exactly, in the you're, tournaments. Right, you're right. So maybe you have encountered it suddenly in the tournaments and yes. it's not part of the rebalancing of the tournaments that no. people who do not have orcs suddenly require them. So we, we fixed this and with the next uh, deploy it's also uh, gone. Yes. This with problem. the next update that problem will be fixed. And then you should only be asked for orcs if you really already produce them. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, da, da, da. Can we have a way to push trades only seen by members of our fellowship? Sorry, what was the question again? Can we have a way to post trades only seen by members of our fellowship? Asks John. Yeah, I think John has a... So this is uh, now only my, my, my assumptions. Yeah? Why would you want to have this? I think the reason why you want to have it is that sometimes there are so few trades available that it is um, sometimes a pr uh, problematic or difficult to trade with a one with the members of the of the fellowship if you play something uh, just on the market it's gone before your fellowship can react to it and that's a bad thing if you just wanted to help your members no? so naturally someone is asking for limitation on hey limit it to only uh, show it for guild members but the problem that is underlying is that we have not enough trades in the trader and we are looking into ways how to improve the trader in that respect because if there would be enough trades available in the trader no one would want to limit it no if true yeah you know, if if you if you would have enough of something you would not want to have to build walls around yourself to protect it yes. um, but, but i can understand how you now want it 
but that would actually even increase the problems for everyone else then. Yes, because then there won't be any trades if you are not in a fellowship or in a different fellowship yeah. or in a small fellowship. So, so the problem is valid yeah. and we have sure. to solve it, but sure. we will most likely not add this for fellowship only filter. So we will try to solve it, but not in this way. <laughs> I hope this is right. fair enough, yeah. <laughs> but in general, what we envision is that you do not have to wait for goods if you want to trade. If you have if you have produced the goods, and this is what takes time already, no? you build the manufacturer, you upgrade the manufacturer, you have to wait until production is finally completed, and then you have the wrong goods. <laughs> And then you enter the, the, the trader and you just want to quickly exchange it. We want this to be quick. We want this to be quick. We don't want you to have to wait one more week just to exchange marble into steel. Yes. Um, and currently, sometimes, and for some players in some areas, that's a problem. And we want to fix that, definitely. Yes. Matthias asked if we are only doing German localization or more. I can tell you we have Elfenar available in 20 languages. So crazy, no? Uh, yes, we do more than German localization. <laughs> <laughs> and you see, he's involved with it. <laughs> so you yes. ask the right guy. Yes. If I find a typo in the German language, I go to him. Yes, that yeah. is true. And then Who I translates have to fix this? It. And, and then I have to fix it. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> you always give me work. <laughs> yeah, but you also give me work. That is yeah. true, that is true. Yeah. But yeah, that's actually how collaboration works, you know? Ah, to a certain extent. Ah, okay, that's good to know. I just lost the name, but I saw a question that... Ah, there it is. Uh, Larry says, when trading, I don't see the same people uh, in the trader as my, uh, as my wife. We are in the same fellowship, but totally different names. Why is that? that is but they have totally different world names. World, world names. So world if you are not playing on the same world, but you are in the same fellowship, then you are playing on the same world. Yeah, you. So are. what uh, is the case then? Is in the trader you see the 200 people closest to you. So if you are located in a different area of the world map, you will also see different people in the trader. Yeah. So you see trades from the 200 people close to you yes. plus the fellowship. your fellows. Plus your fellowship. Yes. So um, you should see the same offers from your fellows than uh, your wife does, but uh, her neighbors are not your neighbors. If they offer something, you won't see it in the other way around. Yes, exactly. And also, if you discover certain players, you will always see them in the trader as well. Yeah. So if, in case you have more than 200 people discovered, which is quite unlikely, then you would also see those people. Yes. So 200 is more or less the minimum of trading partners you have to get started. And you see 200 trading partners and you open your trader and you don't see many trades. So what are these people doing? We want to solve this problem. <laughs> this, yes. this should be enough to always find what you need if you only have nine different resources there. Yeah. Yes. Are there any further questions, that, very pressing questions that we missed? Because I see it's also already 10 past 6. So it's true. We will answer one as many as we or can. two more questions, as many as we can. And everything else, of course, uh, will still be collected, the feedback and the questions. Yes, yes We of can course. answer this in the forums and... Um, yes. Yeah, you can... Also, it can be on the next page, no? on our next yes. uh, Q&A session. We yes. might have this question on the paper to answer it. Yeah, if you have more questions, then you can obviously also go to the forums and then you can get an answer too. Uh, da, da, da. More questions. Yeah, but he confirms they are on the same world. Yes, no? yes, yeah. I saw it too. But it's great to play with his wife, isn't it? Of course. I mean, so it's for, for, maybe not for me, but for him. You know. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's always fun to play with people you know. Yeah, I mean, uh, in the best case, together. you have totally yes. uh, different boosted production, and then you can all also have 50% of your trade needs are already fulfilled by the partner. That yes. helps a great deal. Oh, yes. I am trying to find more questions that we haven't touched yet. Yeah. And look at all the hearts we are getting. Isn't yes. that awesome? So many hearts. Press the heart button. One more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
press the hard button. Oh, if someone asks for Rike. <laughs> Should I mention it? I, I saw her in the chat, I think. Ah, nice. She, she is here, so hi Rike. Hi Rike. Yes. Get well soon and get here. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Why did you create the traveling merchant? Mr. Fan, yes. Yeah, a question from... Uh, Adam. Adam Feldman. Adam Feldman. Hello, Adam. So why did we create it? To give you a, a wider area of, of rewards. No? In the last build, uh, events, we only uh, gave out buildings that give you culture or maybe uh, population. And if you have participated in all those events, then your city should be full of culture buildings now. And uh, it's a bit of a shame because the buildings are so nice, they look mm -hmm. beautiful, and somehow something inside you tells you, I don't need any more culture buildings, I need space for other stuff. Yes. For instance, for good production. So we said, this time we will offer you buildings that do not give culture, or not only uh, culture, and focus also on some other stuff you might not have enough of. So we created the merchant. So you have another good income. Yes. And if you have a lack of... I mean, do you like the idea? I think it's a nice thing. Sure. Yeah, It's a nice thing if you have an additional building that produces a, an amount of go goods, an amount of coins, an amount of supplies, an amount of orcs even we have in this. I mean, this is way more colorful and useful then. It's a lot more variety than we had at first, because then you had culture and population or both. And now you have so many more things. Yeah. And even uh, when you are one of the more advanced players, you see that like the importance and the difficulty of having enough uh, coins and supplies, it, it shrinks over time. It, it, no? So later you have other problems. You need the guest race goods, uh, like Ambrosia, for instance, that was mentioned before. And <clears throat> if you only have culture buildings, then you get a very high culture bonus, obviously, and have a lot of coins and supplies. But what you actually would need is maybe one of the goods, or one of the org buildings. And um, so we think that's a bit more rewarding to have more variety here. Okay. Yeah, see, Heidi loves the merchants. See. You got it. <laughs> yeah. I don't see any... I don't see a lot of more new questions, so maybe we should make an end to the stream. Yeah. Okay, if you don't have any more questions, or if you have questions later, after we are done here, yes. then you can still ask them here and we will still pick them up. We will try. Yeah. Or you can go to the forums and ask your question there and get it answered either by the team or by other players. players. So, yes. So, I hope you continue looking forward to every new daily prize in, <laughs> in the Rise of the Phoenix event and play through it, try to solve all the quests, it's certainly possible, and try to open all those little nice present boxes, eggs. Yes. And, uh, yeah, is it too early to say Happy Easter? <laughs> I, I Maybe mean, a bit. Maybe okay, a bit. okay. <laughs> I got a hint. <laughs> so, no happy Easter for you this time. Yes. But have a nice evening or something. Yes. <laughs> See you next time. See you next time. Bye bye.